Hello everybody and welcome back. Today I have a very bougie video planned for you. I'm going to be creating a look solely using Dior products. I am very excited to feel what it's like to only wear Dior makeup. I also wanted to say a huge thank you to the team for helping me out with this video. They sent me a gorgeous and very generous package to make this video possible and for that I am very, very appreciative and very thankful. So before we dive into these makeup products, I'd love for you to subscribe if you haven't already and let's get into it. I'm going to dive right into foundation and I'm going to try one of their newer complexion products. This is the Forever Skin Glow Foundation. They sent over the shades 1.5N and 2N. So I'm going to swatch both of them against my skin so we can see which one is going to match me most. The bottle is very beautiful. Oh, it also has SPF 15, which is nice. Right now, I just have my first aid beauty moisturizer on as well as my super goop unseen sunscreen. Oh, this looks like it's gonna be a perfect match. This is 1.5. Oh, maybe it's gonna be a little light. Never mind. Hmm, I don't know, maybe. It's pretty good. It's just, it feels like a little bit maybe light. <laughs> but that's because I am light. I'm giving both a good shake. I mostly clip out me shaking foundation because it's, I don't know, awkward. And here is uh, 2N. Which I think fades into my skin even more. I think I'm going to go with 2N. Both pretty good matches, but I feel like 2N is a bit closer. And I'm going to be applying this foundation with this random NARS brush. It doesn't have a name. It does smell kind of florally, but it's not so intense compared to like other high-end foundations. But it's still flowery. <laughs> Okay, this one does start to set up on you, so right on my forehead here, I'm having a bit more trouble blending it out, so that's good to know in the future. But it does have a nice thin consistency, and it has quite a bit of coverage. I was kind of expecting something lighter. I didn't really read the full description of it. I just wanted to experience this foundation without the description first, you know? I just wanted to see if I liked it before falling in love with the description but it feels really, really nice. Um, it kind of feels like a hybrid of the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin and the NARS one. The Charlotte Tilbury one is a bit thicker in consistency, whereas the NARS one is super, super thin. This feels right in the middle there. It has that kind of velvety, healthy glow. I really enjoy how it's looking and it applied really easily. It also immediately feels like it's going to be a good long wearing one because it does dry down quite quickly. I do have a very dry spot right here today and it's not clinging to it terribly. It feels really nice and looks really softening. Just gonna go over with a damp sponge to remove any excess. This is a elf sponge from the Cookies and Dreams collection. I just love how it's marbled, it's so pretty. Wow, this looks really promising. I do hope that the fragrance kind of dissipates because it is kind of intense under my nose, but as it sets, I'm sure it will go away. Just brought you guys in a little bit closer so you can see how it's sitting on top of my, my skin and my texture and everything like that. It's a perfect match. Oh my gosh, a little bristle. I would see myself reaching towards this one over the NARS one just because of its match. I find that the NARS ones run a little bit yellow or a little bit too pink for me. I did end up going to the mall a couple days ago and I swatched a majority of the NARS shades of this one, the light reflecting foundation, and they all run a little bit too yellow or pink on me. I wish that the neutrals were a bit more neutral. <laughs> but this is like an awesome match. There's so many complexion products coming out on the market right now. I need to do like a rank video or something along those lines after I'm able to try them all out. It's a little, it's accentuating a little bit of dry spots right on my nose here and right there, but not terribly. Like I feel like you wouldn't really be able to notice that unless I pointed it out. This is a great start to this video. So now for concealer, I did try this one out in the past and I was not a fan of it whatsoever, but I feel like my tastes have changed, my under eyes have changed since then. So I'm excited to revisit this one. This is the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. 
I have the shades 2N and 1.5N again. At the time of organizing this video, the new backstage one wasn't announced or launched yet, so I'll have to pick that one up at a later date when I can, when it's available to test out for you guys if you're interested. But today, going in with this one, I will be going in with 1.5N. I feel like that will be the perfect shade. I'm just gonna go in with a little bit on the inner and outer portion. A little. I went in with a medium amount. <laughs> and I'm going to blend one side out with a sponge. And the other I'll start with my finger just to see if it works better. I don't remember what I disliked about this found or concealer in the past, but I'm just gonna pretend it's a whole new concealer. On the side, I'm taking my ring finger. I'm gonna press it all about. I like the way this side looks a lot more from looking afar. Hey, that looks really nice. Just adding a little bit more right here just to even out both sides because the sponge took quite a bit of it away. I think I was a silly goose in, in the past because that is a beautiful concealer. It looks really, really nice. Really non-accentuating for how much coverage it offers. I like that and I see myself reaching for that. Okay, this combo feels really, really solid and exciting to me right now. Okay, so now I'm going to revisit another product uh, that I haven't used in a really long time. This is the Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder No Powder. I have the shade 2N, which I fear might be dark from my skin. So I'm gonna go in with like the slightest amount just to set um, in the center of my face. I'm gonna take it on this Moda blush brush. I'm just gonna set my forehead. Okay, it doesn't look like it's darkening anything. I remember really enjoying this powder. The only thing that I didn't like about it was that it hard panned really quickly. So I'm just making the conscious effort to flip my brush so any moisture from the foundation that got on here won't go onto the powder. I'm gonna take a little eyeshadow brush to concentrate a little bit more right under my eyes. I have a little funny story about the next product I'm going to be going in with, which is the brow pencil. I'm gonna start talking about it now so I, I'm not stuck on it all day, but this actually was the first brow pencil I ever had in my life. My mom actually got it for me, if, I think for maybe Christmas or something, but at the time, ABH wasn't in Canada. Anyways, this was just really accessible. It was just at the Shoppers Drug Mart and it was such a great brow pencil. I'm just gonna start doing my brows while I'm talking about this. So I got hooked on this in high school and um, how does a high school person afford a <laughs> Dior pencil? I also was not working at the time. I didn't have the time to have a part-time job because I was always dancing and this was one of the only makeup steps I would do on the everyday for high school. So what I would do on the way back home from school or wherever I was, I would take the back roads because my parents live on an acreage. So I would zigzag up and down all of the township roads and I'd pick up all of the bottles. <laughs> so I was cleaning the earth so I could put Dior in my eyebrows. <laughs> That's how I would save and get money to get this freaking brow pencil. And it's still such a good one. It's a really slow builder. It almost feels like a, a waxy powder, similarly to the Rare Beauty brow powder putty stuff, but just in pencil form. And it's a little bit, uh, of course it's stiffer, but it's such a great slow building one. And it was an awesome first pencil. So I'm really excited to have this back in my collection. <laughs> Thank goodness I live in a place where there's a lot of heavy drinkers. I don't have a brow gel from Dior, so I'm just gonna quickly put some of this brow fix from Charlotte Tilbury, just so I can fluff them up and define them a little bit. Before I move on, I will quickly touch on my thoughts about this powder. I think it's a lovely, like soft blurring powder. I think it works really well. It just tends to hard pan really quickly. That's all I would say. I do enjoy it. I wouldn't call it one of my favorite powders, nor would I like recommend it over like the Kosas Cloud Set or the Rare Beauty or LYS powders. I feel like all of those ones come before 
this one would. But on top of this foundation and concealer, they all play really well together and they look gorgeous. Like I'm loving how my skin is looking um, and I'm afraid something might go wrong. Let's not put that energy out there though. But now let's move on to bronzer and this has got to be the cutest bronzers I have ever seen. They have little cushions on them, look how pretty. These are the Dior Forever Natural Bronze. I have the shades 02 Light Bronze and 05 Warm Bronze. So I think the number two will work a lot better for me. Yeah, and here, just so you can see, yeah, this is going to be too deep, but it looks a little bit more neutral. Really pretty. I freaking love how it's padded. I feel like I could take a little bougie nap on it. You know the drill, it's my Moda, whatever the frick. <laughs> Blending fan, you're like, which one? The blending fan one. It has that light floral scent still, but it's not like too in your face. I really like the amount of pigmentation I'm seeing here. It's like perfectly pigmented, so it's not too sheer, so I have to really work to build it up, nor is it too pigmented that I have to panic to take it down. It's like right in the middle there. It's very approachable. It feels just like a, a nice matte powder bronzer. I feel like it's not revolutionary. It feels like a lot of other matte bronzers. I feel like a majority of people would be happy if they were to invest in this product. I feel like it's just mostly for this beautiful packaging though, just because I feel like this formula is reminiscent of a lot of other other brands out there, you know? Still cute, the color's really nice and balanced. It's not too red or orange or yellow. It has more of like a neutral undertone, but it still warms up the skin really nicely. I think that's flattering. In this collection, they also have highlighters. Now this one has the same kind of packaging, but the highlighter has like a shiny coat whereas the bronzer is matte. I have the shade One Nude Glow. This is the Forever Couture Luminizer. Wow, which looks like it could be a little bit dark. I don't know though, it could have like a super sheer base. Ooh, okay, I think it does. Mm, might be dark, <laughs> might be a little bit dark. We'll see though. Let's go into this. I feel like my eyeballs are telling me to go have a nap. I suddenly just hit a wall. <laughs> but let's go in with this highlighter. I'm going in with my Moda Pro Glow Brush. It seems to be a different formula than other Dior ones I've tried in the past. I've had a couple of their highlighting palettes in the past and I wasn't a super fan of that formula. I felt like it was a little bit too glimmery and texture enhancing for me. I really enjoy the way this is going on though. It feels more velvety and it's sinking into my skin and it's looking a part of my skin a bit better. It's not very metallic, which it felt kind of like it could have been. It's more satiny. Also, I don't really see an undercast when I'm looking ahead and it's not shining in the light. I feel like it's not too dark for me, so that's good news. I thought this is where this video was gonna start taking a turn. I'm trying to feel out if it's unique to me I'm kind of getting a blend of the Ilia highlighter, the powder one, and what is it? The M Cosmetics, the powder highlight. This right here, the Sunscape highlighters. Yes, I feel like it's a mixture of this and the Ilia one. I feel like this is the baby in between those two, which is a good thing because I do adore both of them. <laughs> so I, I like it. <laughs> Ooh, I'm also gonna throw a little bit of that into my inner corners while I'm right here so that I don't forget later. Do you hear that? My eye tooted. Now for blush, I'm going to be going in with this super hyped up one. This is the Dior Backstage Rosy Glow Blush in 001 Pink. This one is super hyped up and I want this one to work for me so badly. So I'm going to give this one another shot today, but sometimes it just looks uh, like chalk, like white chalk on me. I'm gonna give it a fair shot once again. I'm using this BH Cosmetics number no. three brush, which is just an angled fluffy brush. Okay, okay, okay. I feel like it's gonna work. I just packed a lot of the pigment on here. I think I was always a little bit light-handed with this, but I'm seeing it change. It's turning a lot warmer on my skin. Do you see that? Huh. Oh yeah, it's cute. 
Okay, it's working. Mm. Will this color look good on my nose? Yes. That's cool. It's like changing in front of my eyes. Weird that it works really well with these products because every time I tried it, it looks exactly like this on my skin. So since I was going to be going in with such a cool toned blush, I got the cool palette for my eyes. This is the eye palette in 002 cool neutrals. I've had one of these palettes before. It was the one that had quite a bit of berry tones in it. I did end up decluttering it because I don't reach for berry colors often. I don't know what I want to create. I'm gonna think about it for a quick second and I'll be right back. I did prime my eyelids with the Fenty Beauty Eye Primer while I was thinking about what I wanted to do. I think I'm going to do like a simpler, kind of cool toned, smokier eye using these three shades. So I'm first going to go in with this shade down here. Ooh, that's looking a lot more pinky purple on my eye. I love the Backstage eyeshadow formula. It's really easy to work with. They feel very creamy, but they blend out like a finely milled powder. It almost feels like it does the work for you. You just have to do little light sweeps. Now I'm going to switch my brush to a Smith 230. The first one I went in with, this big fluffy one, is a Smith 237. So now I'm going in with a smaller one. I'm going to dip into this shade up here now. Now I'm going to concentrate this color a little bit lower than that first one kind of more in my actual crease and a little bit onto my mobile lid. Now with a Smith 247, I'm going to dip into the deepest shade of the palette, this one over here, and I'm going to start building that up on my lid. I'm taking a touch of it first just because I don't want to end up with too much on my eyes. Just gonna take that first brush with a touch of that first color just to help everything further. And for my lower lash line, I'm going to try to tuck pigment really close to my lash line. I don't wanna over blend it onto my lower. So I'm taking that darkest color first on an angled brush. This is a BMX 498 line brush from Moda Pro. And I'm going to press that carefully right under my lashes on the outer corner making sure everything connects on the outer V. I'm going to take that kind of on the outer third. I'm going to wipe that on my makeup towel down here, and I'm going to take that mid-toned shade the rest of the way. And I'm going to blend it with the very edge of this brush. I'm not going to introduce a fluffier brush to do so because that's going to diffuse it downwards. I'm gonna keep it at that. So I'm just gonna repeat that on this eye real quick and I'll be right back. I really like this tone on my eyes. I feel like it's making the green pop really well. But now it's time for mascara. I did quickly curl my lashes right after I was done this eye. I'm going to be going in with their classic mascara, the Dior, um, Dior Show mascara. I don't know, I know they have a bunch of them, this might be the original, I'm not quite sure. It doesn't really say at the bottom here, but it's this one with this brush. It's massive. It's not the kind of brush I usually prefer, but we'll see how I, I do today. This is way too big for my liking. This is like my whole eyeball. Look at that. Okay, I just built up this mascara twice and I feel like it's not really giving my lashes a show. Um, it makes them look really nice and cute and fluffy, but it doesn't really give what I want my lashes to give, you know? It's not enough volume or length for me and the wand is just a little too big and intimidating <laughs> for me. It's a mid mascara. It's not the worst, it's not the best. Like my lashes look nice, I just, I want more for them, you know? But here's an up close shot of my eyes all done. I really like how they turned out. It's different tones for me, but I really like how it complements the blush. I'm getting light spring vibes, really cute. So now let's move on to lips. For my lips, they have a variety of lip products. 
Um, but the only ones I have physically with me are the Lip Glow Oils in two shades. I have Mahogany and Rosewood. Rosewood is one of my all-time favorite lip products in general. So I might try to give this one a shot. I feel like it will suit the eye color a bit more as well. These are super, super sheer, so don't let the tint in here um, intimidate you. See, like I just swatched it on the back of my hand and it's like a very slight little tint. Surprisingly, Rosewood is a bit more pigmented in comparison to Mahogany. Here's Rosewood. I don't have a lip liner to line my lips from Dior, so I'm gonna take one from my collection. I don't know what would suit this look the best. It's gonna take me a hot second. <laughs> I decided on Mac Soar because I thought it was kind of a cute pinky plummy one. I feel like it combines the pink from my cheeks to the plum on my eyes, you know what I mean? Maybe you don't, but now you do. I'm gonna try to just apply a little bit of this because I don't want it to overpower the lip oil. So I'm just adding definition to my cupid's bow and I blended the rest away. I didn't line all the way into the sides of my lips. And now I'm going into mahogany. Okay, cute. Okay, I think that worked out. And here is the finished, completed look. I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. I wanted to know what a full face of Dior felt like and it feels damn good. Hi guys, I thought I'd pop in to give you a little checkup since I wore this makeup all day. I can't believe how good my skin still looks. I did have a nap earlier, as you can tell. I didn't fix my little mascara leak here. I wonder if you cried in this mascara if it would give you those intense tears. Anyways, I think this looks fabulous still. I This is a remarkable foundation. It still looks almost fresh. My oil hasn't destroyed this foundation at all. It still looks like it would go on strong for many more hours, even under my bangs. I'm amazed. I knew this was gonna be a gooder since the first swipe of foundation on my skin. I'm really excited about this foundation, you guys. Wow. This and the rose ink, what a good month. Anyways, back to past Julia. So I separated the products I used today into three categories. So my favorites, the products I personally love the most and that I see myself using a lot um, or that I already have been using a lot. And the second category is based on your personal preferences. I like them, but I don't find them to be the most unique. It's kind of like a little mini roundup just for Dior today. And then lastly, like my disappointments. So let's start off with my favorites. So that's going to be the complexion products. So the Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation as well as the concealer. These two work incredibly together. I love how my skin looks today. The base was flawless and it was really easy to work on top of it and it still looks incredible. It feels incredible, doesn't feel heavy at all. I, I said that kind of weird, at all. <laughs> I, I feel very hopeful in this duo. I see myself using this foundation a lot. Same with the concealer. I feel like they feel very solid. I will for sure update you my thoughts once I was able to try this out more in my actual roundup, but I feel fairly confident in this duo today. Of course, some of my favorite products from the brand are the Dior lip oils. They're just stunning and I'm so happy to have a new shade in my hands. Rosewood, I think is still my number one favorite. It just adds a sheer warmth to your lips and such gorgeous shine and it smells good and it feels nice. I just love these so much. Another favorite of mine, I think mostly just because I have funny memories connected to it, is the eyebrow pencil. It truly does feel like any other eyebrow pencil. I feel like across the market, they all feel the same pretty much. It just depends on what you're willing to spend, um, what shape you like. I really enjoy this pencil. It's, it's just nice and it has funny memories connected to it. And my last favorite of today was the highlighter. Oh, this is not the highlighter, this is the bronzer. This one felt like a unique highlighter to my collection. It's like a satin that sinks right in, but it still is very flattering and it looks kind of like a cream, but it is a little bit more glimmery than other ones that look like a cream on the skin. I'm excited to have this one in my collection and the packaging is so freaking 
beautiful. Now moving on to like my personal preference category. It all depends on what you are willing to spend or what you prefer with your products. So for the bronzer, it is a really solid formula, but I don't find these ones to be unique compared to any other flat matte bronzer out there. Uh, I feel like people who love packaging will like these the most because although there is a really good formula inside of here, the packaging is where it's at for this. This is what really makes it stand out to me and it feels just really luxe, which it should since it is coming from Dior, but it's a really nice formula. I, I really liked the pigmentation level in there. Um, I do see myself reaching for it time to time, but it's not anything unique formula wise. Packaging wise, yes. <laughs> For the blush, it isn't my favorite blush ever, but it is cute and it is a fun one to have in my collection. It depends on what colors you like. It is a good formula. It builds up nicely. It stays a while since it's a powder. It just depends on on you. Now for the powder, no powder. It is a great powder, but you do have to be careful with that hard panning. But now that I've said that lots, hopefully if you do end up picking this one up, you can avoid it from doing so. I think it is a great blurring and setting powder. I just don't find that it beats any of my other favorites I have in my collection. So I think I'll reach for this time to time, but I don't know if it's going to enter like my powder rotation as quickly. And finally, for this section, the eyeshadow palette. I think the formula is really beautiful. It's easy to work with. Um, you get a stunning range of tones and I really like how balanced the palette is. But again, it is an eyeshadow palette, so it's definitely based on what you like. So if you are drawn to this one and you do end up picking it up, I think you'd be really, really happy with the consistency of these eyeshadows and how it performs. But if you aren't drawn to it, I wouldn't say pick it up because it is pricey. And now for the product I was kind of disappointed in, um, it was the mascara. I don't really see myself using this one again. It didn't really give my lashes my desired look and the wand is just too big for my liking. It's hard to control the mascara and it's harder to get into the inner corners of my lashes. I already feel like my lashes have fallen since applying it. I don't know, it's just not my favorite. But there you have it. All in all, I think I'm most excited about these things. I. I can't wait to apply these again tomorrow. But there's all my thoughts on the products I used today. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a like. It would help me out so very much. I'll make sure to link all of these products in the description down below as always. So feel free to check that out and I'll see you in the next one. Love you. Bye.